Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts, and today is New Year's Eve. It's December 31st, 2020, and this is our final video of this year. We'll be back next week, of course, but this is the uh, the end of uh, 2020, and I think, it's, I think a lot of people will be glad to see this year go by, and uh, we can get on maybe to a fresh year and have a fresh start in, in so many areas, but here we are, and uh, it's been an interesting week. All the snow around here melted uh, in the last few days, and it actually got back up to around 50-something degrees here, but we've had uh, gale force warnings on several nights here three or four nights this week out, of, out at the house uh, because we had 30 to 50 mile an hour winds coming in off the water, heavy rain. It was a little wild, <laughs> uh, but it happens here a lot in the winter. We're kind of used to it. We just make sure all the cars are locked, the windows are up tight, and uh, you're not parked under any trees with weak branches because they do come down. Some of you remember we lost that monstrous tree in our yard a few years ago. That 130-year-old tree came down in the middle of the night. And uh, somebody thought a plane crash had happened. It was so loud when it hit the ground. So anyway, it was something. Oh, one thing I did want to let share with everybody is that one of the advantages of living here in Gloucester is that we have a great fishing industry here. And uh, during the during the, the shutdown and everything that's been going on, the fishing industry here has done an amazing job of ke keeping uh, fresh fish coming in and uh, keeping their staffs on, paying their people. And one of the things they've done is they've been reaching out more and more and more directly to the community by passing the, the, the markets in New York uh, or in, in other parts of the country where they ship to and selling things to the locals. And uh, this uh, morning, uh, they put out on their local uh, uh, tweets and Facebook pages and so forth that there was a special on lobster um, in the area for New Year's for those of you that want those of us that want it. So my wife called right away and said, "Gee, the, the, it's uh, it sounds like the deal is you get two two and a half pound lobsters, which are good sized lobsters, not those little pound and a quarter things they sell in the restaurants, big ones, two and a half three pound lobsters, and um, a dozen and a half uh, fresh uh, oysters." Um, for a, a package price of just $40. So um, guess what we're having for dinner this evening for New Year's Eve? We're having oysters and boiled lobsters. It'll be delicious. I love lobster. Well, I love sea We eat fish fairly often. We eat fish a couple times a week around here, but um, I think it's going to be uh, uh, terrific. All right. All right, now let's get started on this week's video. Um, as I said, this is the last one of the year, and we'll be going over the stuff that was in volume number 355. It's hard to believe we've done that many, but I guess we have. And um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was was this. I've had several emails about this. There's been a bit, little bit of controversy. I had uh, identification assistant um, uh, or the auction preview uh, thing that we run on the site where people send us in links and ask us what do we think of things before they bid on them. Um, we had several on this cup. Uh, this was being sold by Joni's up in Canada. Uh, it was listed as a Kangxi period cup with a Chen Hua mark on it. And uh, when we first heard about it, we first saw it, uh, it was you know only at $100 or so something. Uh, we were updating some of the pages for Joni sale. We, 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 we saw it. I don't think we included it because I had some questions about it. And then when it was up to about $600 yesterday, I got another inquiry from somebody wanting to know what the deal with, was with this cup. Because as you know, if this is just a mid 18th century cup, 600 bucks is about all she wrote at the most. But it is Three Friends of Winter. And the Three Friends of Winter pattern has caused a lot of financial uh, there's been a, a, a lot of financial craziness about Three Friends of Winter porcelains in the Chinese market because authentic Kangxi Three Friends of Winter cups are worth as much as a month cup. They're worth sixty, eighty, a hundred thousand dollars if they're mark and period. All right, and if they're not mark and period, they're worth less. But um, this was listed as, as a Kangxi example, and uh, somebody really wanted to know what I thought of it. And I took a good look at it, and I'm going to show you what we came to, uh, how we came to the conclusion that it wasn't Kangxi, in our opinion. We believe it was probably a mid 18th century cup at best, um, uh, probably 18th, but no, 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 no older, no, not Kangxi. And what what caught our attention here was the bottom of this cup. Um, you notice the blurry, bluish toned glaze that's washed over the bottom here. It's very thick. Uh, one of the things that's always noticeable about good Kang Shi blue and white is how white the uh, paste looks under the glaze because the glaze is clear. Um, it doesn't have a heavy bluish tinge to it typically. And when you look at the bottoms of Kang Shi pieces, they don't have gumps and clumps of thickened blue glaze, blue wash glaze over it. The other thing we didn't like was for Kang Shi period was the quality of the script that's displayed here. For a cup to be so beautifully uh, painted, this cup was quite well painted, 
but to have such a poor execution on the uh, mark uh, seemed odd to us. And I also we also noticed that the foot rim here in places is is, is completely flat. In other places, it's V-shaped. There seemed to be something going on there. We couldn't figure that out, but we just didn't like the look of the bottom of it. But to be further certain, because there is so there's been a number of controversies about these 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 three friends of winter porcelains, um, uh, and even even we'll get to those in a minute. But but we're going to start with this. Uh, this is the bottom of a. This is over an Allen Triang site. If you haven't used Allen's site, uh, uh, please do. Uh, he is. A, he lives in Paris. He's a wonderful, wonderful man, and he maintains this fantastic art website. Uh, he and I think his brother works with him. He's a Vietnamese fellow originally. He knows a lot about Chinese art, and he's hilarious. And um, uh, he, he has the, the site you can use for reference. He keeps all kinds of stuff on here. He's really good. But uh, the, here's a, a pair of month. Here's a month cup. Okay, for example, and that's what the mark looks like on the bottom of a month cup, which is about the same size as the cup that was sold on eBay. And uh, then you have this small round bowl. It's a it's a bowl because of its shape, but it's the size of a cup. It's got a couple. It's got two or three inches in diameter. And again, you have this very nice, clear, smooth, um, um, unpooled glaze covering the very, very, very white paste. And then you can see it again on this one. Um, this is a uh, Kangxi uh, month cup. Now the other cup, uh, the cup that sold sometimes the month cups have, have rings around the top. Sometimes they don't. This one doesn't. Um, uh, did this one? No, this one didn't either. But anyway, sometimes, sometimes these small cups have rings around the top. Um, month cups, not so much, but other, other ones do. This one didn't. And again, you have this very nice white smooth glaze, no pooling, no gunk, no goo, no nothing. Nicely done calligraphy. It's very faint and very light, but that also may be how they shot the picture. And then when you come back to this cup, um, it just the more you look at it and the more you compare it to the, to the, to the finished work of Mar of period Kung Shi pieces, whether they have earlier marks on them or not, um, it begins to fall apart. And uh, I think that some people got a bit out over their skis on it. And to, to, to make the point further, this isn't just a problem with these. And we'll take a look at a pair of um, uh, Three Friends of Winter dishes that sold a few years ago um, at uh, uh, Christie's. And this was, uh, this was um, let me see, this was uh, one, of the, one of the two let me see, it was a pair. Here's the pair of the look of the back, the fronts, and so forth. And these were, these were listed as 18th century blue and white uh, 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 Jijing marked uh, bowls. And they had an eight to $12,000 estimate because they were so beautifully done. And uh, in the end, they ended up selling for $100,000. And, and uh, if you take a good look at them, you say, okay, all right, there's that, there's that. Um, if you didn't know it, the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art has this virtually identical bowl in its collection as a Jai Jing market period bowl. Here's the, uh, we're gonna, this is the Metropolitan Museum example. Okay, and we'll pull this up first. Here's the front of the bowl. There's the bowl at Christie's. All right, there's slight variations, but basically stylistically they're the same one. And then they're even more the same when you examine the backs. All right, here's the back of that uh, uh, bowl that's in the, uh, the Metropolitan Museum collection. And um, um, for lack of any, any legitimate criticism, you can't, you can't say they're not the same. I don't think you can logically say they're not the same thing. And I think the audience disagreed with Christie's on this, and they paid a much heavier price, paying $50,000 a piece for these, which is much more in line with the market period example. And this isn't a criticism of Christie's. They have to do this if they're not absolutely, you know, God's, gobsmack assured because uh, they don't want to hear about it later that they sold something that was um, misrepresented in age in, in, in to the wrong that nobody buys no nobody minds buying something that's that's uh, uh, you know it's Ming and that's being sold as late Ching okay fine they spotted the difference and they got it but anyway and and as a result these three friends of winter pieces and because there's so much in, in demand and because the prices can get so high on them um, there's some cons they, people can be a little bit conservative and you get some visual records online that can be a little bit misleading and misunder be, mis be misunderstood if you, if you don't do some digging. So in, in any event, my, my personal view was, was that this, 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 this bowl, this, this little cup, was probably a, a Qinlong period or Yongchen, but um, um, not Kangxi. 
All right. You got to be very, very careful when you're researching things online to make sure the comp you're looking at, the things you're looking at are consistent with what's known in other areas because you are going to find things that are misdated with crazy prices on them. And just there is a tendency to assume that what you find online is correct. And as we all know, that isn't always the case. So um, anyway, that's that. This isn't a knock on Joni's. I think they, they listed it as, as accurately as they could. I just think that um, um, I think that some people got a little excited thinking that it was either a Chenhua mark and period piece or at least a Kangxi bowl with a Chenhua mark on it. And I don't think it was either. That's all there is to it. The other thing I wanted to mention was this. This was sort of curious. This is sort of a lesson on reserves and uh, high opening bids and auctions. This was a sale that we had on the newsletter page last week because I thought the stuff was very nice. It was being sold by Welcome All Friends, their dealers over in the Netherlands, and they handle good things. They always have nice things. And uh, But they tend to be more fixed price sellers, um, and I think it's because they're fairly aggressive when they buy. If they buy at auction or they buy at an estate sale, they, they're sort of aggressive, so they pay a bit. And uh, there were a number of things they had on there that I, I decided to include in the newsletter because I didn't think the opening bid was crazy. And, but I, I, I wondered if anybody would bid on them with an opening bid like this. And this was one of them. It's a Wan Lee um, blue and white bridge handle teapot. Very, very well-known type. Uh, nicely done. Had that sort of quick single line pencil sketching onto it. Nicely done. The bridge handle had the typical, you know, sort of usual little flaws and imperfections in it and so forth. And uh, it didn't sell. It didn't sell after, uh, you know, 10 days or so. And, um, I was thinking about it and said, well, you know, what do they normally bring? Well, they bring a wide range of prices, anywhere from uh, 1400 up to $5,000, $6,000. But I went and dug out some past examples. This was one that was over at Rob Michaels. There's a few of them that Rob Sale had. This one brought $4,590. A little, a, little, a little more refined in decoration, but not that much more, okay? It's a different style. And here's another one of a very, very similar style that had an animal on it, and I think it had a minor restoration on it or something. And and it brought 1,400 euros, which is about $1,500, all right, at auction. Here's another one that brought 3,500, very similar to the one we just saw, that brought 1,400. This shows you how the prices can swing. This one brought 3,570 euros, which is about 4,300 or so dollars. And uh, here's another one that brought $4,400. It was a little bit darker blue, a little bit better done, and had a person on it. But 4,400 euros, that's about $5,500. And uh, here's another one that's very similar again, uh, with a bit less decoration, a little more sparsely decorated, it looks to me, that sold for about uh, $1,500 again. All right, so uh, given all of that, I, I'm sort of at a surprise, at a loss, as to why this didn't find it, at least one bid. Struck me peculiarly. All right. And then we're going to hop over here. There were a number of them. You had this, this, uh, this round form, barrel form, uh, uh, 18, uh, 1780s tankard. We've seen them before. We've had them on, on the newsletter many times. And they sell at auction for anywhere from $450 to $650. Had one bid, went out the door for $500. And I, th I have my feeling personally is is that if you start them at a lower price and get some interest, eBay's uh, Cassini algorithm is going to treat you very well. It's going to push it up because they they want to see it move. And I got a feeling that didn't get a bid until the very end. And then there was this tankard sold or didn't sell rather. It had an opening bid of 650, and I found a nearly identical one um, online that sold for 975 euros. I mean, it was so close. I should have compared them. It may have even been the same tank at one point. It sold a few years ago, as I recall. Uh, but it sold for 975, 980 euros, which is about 11 or 1200 dollars. This one didn't get a single bit of 650. All right. And then, um, oh, th this is another one. That oh, this is the one. This is what I found. It was at Rob's. That's it. Okay, 956 euros. Very, very similar. Uh, just a couple of years ago. Okay, I did. I saved it. All right. I didn't think I did. All right. There we go. And uh, then on to this, this Wukai Shunzi period, transitional period, uh, enamel dish. It was a charger, actually. It was 33 centimeters in diameter, almost 34 centimeters. It was very nicely done, had this rather unusual color palette, this very nice soft blue, soft yellow. The enamels were all in good shape. There was just one minor rubbing and bit of rubbing in here, but a good size one. And it had that double um, double foot that they use on this, that track foot around the, uh, around the bottom and uh, with these sort of uh, leaf, leaf overlaying leaf patterns running around it. But a good size one, it's sort of like a shallow bowl, <clears throat> asking an opening bid of $1,500, didn't get it. And uh, we've all seen these before. They sell at auction for anywhere from you know, $1,400, $1,500, all the way up to about $2,700. Nobody, nobody gave it a single bid. 
all right? And it just it didn't sell, which is kind of surprising, all right? And then this was the most surprising lot that didn't sell. This was over eight inch wide, uh, early 18th century, probably, possibly Kangxi period Batavia wear with this leaf pattern and that very nice dry, dry brown uh, glaze over it. Here's a picture of the interior of it. Couldn't see anything wrong with it. The gilding was in nice condition. And this was an eight inch bowl, good size bowl. Um, and, um, you know, I would have thought this thing would have brought 800 to 1100, 1200 dollars. But I think the $500 opening bid scared people off. It was also beautifully shaped. Uh, sometimes you get caught up looking at the glaze and you don't look at the whole piece. The shape of this bowl was very, very nice. The way it came up and then slopes out, comes in, a little cyma curve in there, and then verts out to the rim. And the rim was nice and neatly trimmed all the way around, beautifully done. And uh, not a single bit of five, not even $500, all right? Had a few frits on the rim, which these do have, which makes me further think that probably was a Kang Shi example. $500, and it went without a bidder. And I suspect if they had started it at $30 or $40, it probably would have gone well beyond that. All right, that's just my opinion. All right, now let's get on to uh, the rest of uh, what sold last week. Uh, it's, we're still a little bit early. A number of things sell tomorrow, and uh, we'll update the newsletter page on Saturday, but um, uh, we're going to go through some of the things that have sold already this week. One of the things that I, I want to po uh, point out to people, we had people uh, inquire about this. This is a, a seller over in France, and I don't know why they do this, but they get things up, and if it doesn't get to where they want it, they will strip off and remove all the bids to zero and then cancel the auction so they don't end up paying any fees because uh, they don't feel that they got what they wanted. Um, if you're a seller on eBay, don't, don't, don't do this, all right? This company, this particular seller has done it a few times. They don't sell a lot of stuff. They have nice things. But this thing got up to, uh, I forget, it was up to something. And in the last minute that we had it on the newsletter page, because it's a rare form, they stripped off all of the bids and um, put it to zero and canceled the auction, which is a really bad business practice because it's, uh, uh, they only have 22 feedbacks. Maybe they're not used to selling. Maybe they should do fixed price selling. But um, that was too bad because that was a nice object, and I think it probably would have jumped at the end for them. Unusual um, type of export porcelain, rather nice. All right. For some reason, though, they don't do it. But if you see something that you know had bids and suddenly it doesn't, the reason is is that the seller will cancel all of the bids so they can cancel the listing and not have to pay any fees. And I'm kind of surprised eBay allows it, but they do. All right. Now, over here to this. This was very nice. This was a uh, uh, Kang, uh, Chin Lung, uh, Yong Chen period. Um, this was over in Katowicki. I'm going to get back to the uh, main picture here. Hold on. There it is. This. This was on Katowicki. A really nice cockerel uh, uh, cup and uh, saucer. But beautifully done with a shaped rim. Nice clear yellow on the bird. Look at that. Nice clear yellow. Very, very good use of the uh, Famille Rose enamels. Thick. Nicely defined, slightly lighter toward the edges as it runs around and so forth. And then this wash of nice blue down at the bottom. And uh, here's the cup done in this uh, with, with the same color palette without a cockerel on it. But the cockerel is on the outside, rather, but the cockerel is on the inside. Nice little set. This is a gem. And uh, somebody picked it up for 400 euros, 410 euros, which isn't bad for that. That isn't bad at all. Uh, you go to a good gallery in a good city, you're going to pay about three times that. Uh, but this was a nice thing, and you're buying the artwork. You're buying the quality of the enamels, the quality of the decoration, and the condition. And this was this this had it all, and I think it was a, a great thing that somebody got to add to their collection. And uh, let's see here. Um, th this, the pair of uh, big uh, Famille Rose vases. These were about 18 inches tall, roughly. They were over on Katowicki, but very strong enamels, very strongly decorated with a Famille June ground which are always of interest to people, but it had this very cool um, uh, battle scene on the back of each one like this and uh, nicely colored. But this, I love the aqua blue or turquoise blue ground that they opted to use here instead of doing it in white like the other rest of it. They did it all in this sort of uh, 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 crazy blue background. I like this a lot. It was quite handsome. Here's a picture of the back on both sides. Nicely done. These are, you know, second half of the 19th century vases, and they did very well. They brought $2,688 because, of, I think, because of the unique coloring, the condition, and everything was all there. And they, they were sort of big and showy and colorful. I liked that a lot. They were handsome. All right, and then over to this. This was one of the little bargains of the week. It was a late Qing, early Republic period, sort of a root-type root carving of an immortal. Um, 
very nicely done. Um, and they sort of drilled in and stippled it. May have had actual whiskers coming out of it at one point. It looks like it might have. But nice patina to it. This is a nice old example. Uh, not real old, but old. And all obviously hand done. A good looking thing. And sold for just $57. All right. Who says you can't buy interesting Chinese things for under 100 bucks? You can. All right. And then on to this. This was a, a, a very interesting vase that sold. This was something else that Joni's had up there. And this was from the uh, uh, Jiangxi uh, uh, Porcelain Factory, and it was marked accordingly. They were in operation in the early part of the 20th century, and they did some of the best contemporary porcelain of the day. Um, in China, in Jingdechen, uh, the Jiangxi company. And they had this Zhidao that they put up. Uh, this was, you know, uh, extremely well uh, decorated, very precisely done, uh, very, very uh, typical of, you know, what you'd see on 18th century examples. The very precise, the way they did the blocks, everything was done perfectly, scale, proportion, colors. And this was, you know, modern, um, you know, it's less than, it's just barely 100 years old. And uh, if you're not familiar with these, you can look them up. Um, uh, the Gothberg site has quite a bit of information about the Junshi Factory Company and their marks. This is what they look like on the bottom. And some of you may see this mark and say, "What? Oh, it must be brand new. No, it's not. This, this mark is from around 1900, 1915, somewhere in there. But there's a slight orange peel texture to the glaze on the bottom. You can see it here. And uh, this was their factory mark. It was all hand done, of course. Nicely finished foot rim on it. Uh, nice old foot. And uh, deep, tall foot on it. But beautifully glazed. Notice how precisely they applied their glazes. Really, really good job. And there you can see the orange peel a bit more. And, and very fine use of cobalt. And uh, a lot of interest in these. These are becoming increasingly collected. And uh, this, this vase sold for $7,600, which didn't surprise me at all. Um, we had it on the newsletter page. It was an interesting piece. And this is fairly good size. I think this thing was like 17 or 18 inches tall. Hold on a second. Somebody, somebody said once, I don't mention the sizes often enough. Uh, say, bought in 1932, da, 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 15 inches tall. Right, so there you go. All right, now, so it was a good size pot on top of it. And then there was this, this nice um, uh, Kosomatsuki Chinese for the Japanese market, um, uh, Chanchi to Chonsen period, of the two kids waving at the bird. I love this. There they are outside, spring day. Spring is only a few months off now. Um, this wonderful thing with the ascending bird or a hawk or something, and they're playing. He's holding up something for it, maybe a mouse for it to come down and get. Who knows? And uh, nice looking dish, $326. And this is sort of a collectible area. The plate was in very, very good condition. Um, I think it had a, minor, a couple of frits, which you expect, but didn't have any repairs or anything. $326. Nice looking dish. And then over to this. This was that, uh, that, that uh, Amari dish that we had featured on the newsletter page, just because I thought it was so pretty. I just liked it. I liked the border. I love the use of, um, uh, of uh, iron ready orange and green with a fish scale pattern going around. And then this uh, scholar sitting sharing a scroll and this uh, leaning up against the rocks with pine trees going out over them and all this. Just a sort of a real charming classical Japanese scene. I liked it. And it sold pretty well. It did $366. This wasn't an enormous plate. I think this was fairly small. I think it was what, six or so inches in diameter, something like that? Um, I should look these up before I do all this, right? Uh, there's, the, there's a picture of back of it, uh, I, interestingly, with a Chenmar mark on it, because uh, they often put Chenmar marks on uh, Japanese porcelain. And uh, let's see, where's the rest of it? They're not going to tell us the size? I think it was six or seven inches in diameter. Um, my memory, if my memory is still good. Uh, Doesn't say. Well, anyway, I'm pretty sure that's what the size was. And $366, nice looking bowl. And then this one, the one with the with the water buffaloes on it. I talked about this because I like. I, everybody knows I like uh, bowls with with elephants and and uh, uh, horses, water buffaloes, sheep, animals. I loved how they depicted animals. And uh, this was a, a rather nice one. And I think somebody got a good buy. $405, but very glossy glaze, very nicely done. And this was the ceramics and collectible seller, the uh, uh, Shangri-La guys, as I call them. And uh, nice looking plate, nice looking bowl with an interesting pattern on it. And uh, I, I, I really liked that a lot. I really liked that. And then over here to this, this was something that Welcome All Friends had that they did sell. And I thought this was a wonderful buy. Somebody, I think, got a good buy. Tengxi period, this little bud vase, but very unusual shape. 
This is a really interesting shape. You don't see it often. It's actually a shape you see more often in Japanese porcelain. <clears throat> this very rounded body, an abbreviated neck with just a tiny little mouth on it with a double line. And um, just a lovely, lovely little example. Very Japanese in its feeling. There's the, the little tiny bud vase uh, opening. Here's a picture of the bottom, Tengshi period all the way. And again, one of these those sort of typical uh, firing lines in the foot rims that you see on early porcelains. You see them on Ming pieces too. You see them on all of them. But at any rate, somebody picked this up for $256, just a few inches tall. But what a nifty little piece of porcelain. Just lovely. And then on uh, over to this was this very nice Yong Chen uh, Famille Rose Cup. Not too dissimilar uh, from the, uh, the uh, rooster set we saw, except that it's got, um, it's got this. And I, I guess that's a green pomegranate on it. Crazy looking thing. But I thought this was interesting and very nicely done. And what caught my eye was how thickly the, uh, the red uh, Famille Rose enamels were applied and just how beautifully white that foot rim is. This is just a gem of an example. Really nice little piece of export. And uh, ended up selling on one bid of $250. I think that was absolutely fine. I thought that was an absolutely lovely example. And then over here to this, um, it got no bids at all. It was a pair of uh, Kangxi beakers uh, for $1,500. All right, we've all seen these before. We've seen these pairs of beakers with the uh, sort of apocryphal crazy marks on the bottom, and they do pretty well. Not a bid, and that was, again, welcome all friends had it. All right, and then this sold over on Katawiki. This, uh, this we had on the newsletter page. I thought this was a wonderful piece of molded and relief worked uh, a Japanese Amari teapot with underglazed cobalt blue and then these uh, beautifully done um, uh, relief worked flowers all over it. Uh, very nice and I love the way they, they modeled on the, the petals onto the lid. That's all hand done, all little, each one is shaped by hand and then applied in the clay and then, and then enameled and glazed and so forth. And uh, this was just a lovely piece of Amari, really, really was. All the way around, underglazed blue, overglazed red enamels with gilding. Uh, there's a picture of the top with all the little berries still attached, everything. Uh, just a terrific piece, and I think there's a picture of the bottom here. Do, do, do. There it is, that nice, broad, flat, very white porcelain uh, base, slightly recessed with a bluish tinge to it. And uh, somebody picked it up for um, uh, 600 euros which I think is fine. And as I said, these, these better Japanese things, people are starting to recognize just how good they are. And I was glad to see that do well. I liked that a lot. And uh, then there was, lastly was this a big Famille Rose uh, teapot. Got a single opening bid of uh, $1,250. Um, these sell anywhere typically for $900 to about $1,400, $1,500. So the price was right in there. And then on to the Buddha. This sold uh, last week. Uh, these traveling Buddha sets are uh, uh, seem to be getting increasingly of increasing interest to collectors. This one sold for 1,200 euros, and it measured 50 centimeters tall. This was a big thing. This was uh, around 20 inches tall or so, right? Or uh, 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 17 inches tall. And uh, this was a nicely done one. I like the case on it in particular, and I like the mandala behind them, and the, the very much like Muromachi period uh, 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 shaping, uh, the way the faces were done, the style of it and so forth, but of course on a, a later lotus-type base. Here's a picture of it. I love this. It had a creature coming under the base trying to get out, this, this, or, or guarding it, one or the other. And uh, here's a picture of it. There was an inscription on the bottom, and there's the case when it's closed, that beautiful warm gold uh, 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 work that they put onto them and over time they, they burnish down and they just instead of being shiny shiny like gold they have a very sort of elegant subtle ground color and uh, very nice and uh, at any rate it ended up selling for 1200 euros or about 1500 uh, $1, dollars US uh, it was an excellent thing just a wonderful thing and uh, then the last thing we're going to look at was this, was that large Swato bowl. Uh, nice big bowl. This was a good looking one. It ended up selling for 700 euros, which I think was more than reasonable. And it was good size. It was 38 centimeters in diameter or around 15 or so inches wide. But it had that nice desirable uh, blue enamel uh, work on it. And then the seals running around the outside of it, as I mentioned last week. The seals don't have a lot of wear to them. Often you'll see these in the iron red in particular will be worn off around the outside. 
And you'll see a lot of evidence of use in the middle of these Swato pieces because they were used so much. And this one looks to be quite clean and, and, and quite good. Uh, they, the most, most of these bowls were exported sort of simultaneously from Indonesia as well as being exported to Europe uh, during this period. They were appreciated in both places. And I don't think 700 euros was at all bad for that. If it had brought 12 or 1300 euros, I would have said, yeah, sure. They've, it's got that nice pattern on it and it was in good condition. All right. And that's about it. If you haven't subscribed to us yet at YouTube, please do. We've noticed we're getting a lot of new subscribers lately, so thank you. Leave us a thumbs up if you like the videos. And uh, visit us over at bitamount.com. And the new website is, uh, is, is, is done. It hasn't launched up yet because we're, we're working on the intro videos for you. But just so you know, it's finished, and you'll be seeing it next week uh, as far as I know. All right. So it's right on. We're, we're back on schedule with that uh, for the Bitamount Live site. And um, thanks so much, and have a great New Year. Stay home, stay safe, um, uh, you know, and, uh, but reach out to your friends and family uh, uh, to say Happy New Year, of course. Okay. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.